Charter Local Edition, I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined by Michelle Baim. She is the Regional Director for Southern California for California's High Speed Rail Authority. A lot has gone on since we spoke last. We had thought that the high speed rail would go from, let's call it Central California South, but now it's going to go Central California North. What's the update on that, if you may? Absolutely. Well, we uh, produce a business plan every two years that um, updates everyone on what our plans are. And I want to be clear that we are going from Central California to both Northern California and Southern California. Fair enough. Fair enough. That is our entire Phase 1 500-mile system, and we are still committed to getting from San Francisco to Anaheim to provide that mobility right. benefit for the state. However, it now looks like we will operate a train from Central Valley to Silicon Valley first, rather than operating the first trains from north of Fresno down to the San Fernando Valley. Right, and I'm holding up the map, which was recently released, and so you intend to start and go this way, but eventually come down this way. Correct. Um, and, and we That's will That's a big be change. That is a big change um, in terms of where the train would operate first. However, in order to bring the entire system online, most regions of the state are still going to see all of the same kind of activity ongoing, whether it be finishing the planning and getting the environmental clearance here in Southern California and in Northern California, and even building some early uh, projects in Southern California that have independent utility and help Metrolink and Amtrak operate better. Um, those projects are still going to go forward as planned. Let me ask you though, because there have now been hearings held in Sacramento, and from what I can glean from the hearings, a lot of noise of course, but it appears at a minimum that there is adequate funding, um, identifiable funding for that Northern California leg about $21 billion. We got that money, is that right? Correct. We got it. Correct. But there's nervousness about money going south. And so for those supporters in Southern California, we would hate to see, whoever we are, we would hate to see you know, we, this great high-speed rail that goes from Bakersfield to San Jose or San Francisco and then wah, wah, doesn't get to go south because we don't have the money. Right. And, and I can understand people's concern about that. And one of the things that we've seen internationally with high-speed rail is once you begin to operate a train mm. between point A mm -hmm. and point B, the benefits of that high-speed operation um, are so strong that uh, the private sector is willing to come in and invest in extending that system to the next station is and the next station. Need? Do we need private sector money for maybe call it phase 1B. I know that's my expression, not yours. <laughs> Southern California <laughs> Absolutely. phase. Absolutely. Our business plans have always been based on the fact that we expect to get uh, numerous billions of dollars from the private sector to complete the entire phase 1 system. Let's talk about phase, I'll call it 1B, Southern California. Uh, lots of movement on the routes for Southern California, even though we're going to see it happen later on. Uh, you brought some toys. I love it when you bring props, Michelle. You complete me when you do it. What am I holding? John Jean, here it is. It looks almost lunar, but it's not. It's not. This is a rock core from the Angeles National Forest, our San Gabriel Mountains. Uh, we, were, we were able to obtain last fall a permit from the Forest Service to do exploratory geotechnical investigation to get down into the mountain and find out what kind of rock is down there. So this is an example of that. So this rock is darn hard. I don't know what that means, and it's hard. <laughs> what does that mean? It's, it doesn't feel like shale that would fall apart. That means that it's really good rock to tunnel in. It is? And I absolutely. thought you'd want shale. No? No, no, no. <sighs> this, this, kind of, this particular kind of rock that we've identified in some of our first uh, drilling sites has come up and shown that it is really, it's really exciting our engineers and our tunneling specialists because uh -huh. it's exactly the kind of rock that you would want to build a tunnel in. So I think what I'm holding up now is a map with proposed 
uh, routes from Palmdale to Burbank. And is this going through the Angeles National uh, Mountains? Absolutely. This would be going under those mountains in a tunnel. So all that's four why. of these potential routes. Is it yes. four or three? Uh, all three of three. those routes uh -huh. where on this map you can see the purple color, mm -hmm. that indicates that that portion of the route would be in tunnel under, okay. underground. So I know that you're looking at tunneling. The challenge is that some of the tunneling uh, could be 24 miles long, two feet deep, four miles longer than anticipated, at least on a few of the paths. Is that right, Michelle? Um, that's a lot. That's correct. It is. Um, they are very long tunnels uh, for the uh, domestic uh, context but in the context in the international context there are longer tunnels oh, really? there's a tunnel recently that was built underneath the swiss alps for instance um that was uh 10 miles longer or so so what's the channel do you know and the channel is um over 20 miles okay as well. so, so, so not not too far yeah not too far off we also know though and look i mean this is not unique and this hap has happened throughout the history of railroads but Many of these routes require home displacement. Many of these routes require business displacement. And so, you know, that's your job to figure that out. I know you go to meetings regularly. Talk to me about that process, the eminent domain process, the relocation process, because it's going to have to happen. It happened in the 1800s. It happened in the 1900s. It will happen now again. Yes, we're building a very big piece of infrastructure. And so what we've done, you showed a mm -hmm. recent map, what we've been doing over the course of the last several years is really starting that conversation with the communities that the high-speed train would travel through to really understand how we can improve the routes using all of the technology we have in hand and all of our understanding of those communities and the character of those I, communities I, I, I got, and I, bring those things together. I gotta ask you, so I live on the west side of Los Angeles. I live near the West Side Pavilion. The Expo Line is about to open um, very close to my house. And I think to myself, the catalytic consequences of this line opening are gonna be huge. And then I thought, well, wait a second, anyone who lives near high-speed rail, they're complaining about it. Am I missing something? I mean, doesn't transportation attract business, or is that part of the problem? They don't want the business attraction. Um, the thing with a transportation project, I think, is in the early stages, when you start to talk to people, you're talking to them about the impacts, about the fact that something's going to be planned near them. And, and as it moves through, and begins to become more right. real, gets into construction, and actually starts to get to opening day, I think people change, generally. Um, we have, to, as public agencies, we have to be so careful to really protect the communities when we build something like this. But in the United States, we've never really built a transportation project that we didn't love <laughs> to death. Oh, if you yeah, think about it, it, right? No, and it. so it is a very hard process to decide where you build it and what you connect and how it all comes together. It's, it's interesting. I, I digress for a second. I'm reading a book right now, and it's about the Leland Stanford era. Yes. And I didn't know this, but Leland Stanford, when he was governor, was also chairman of, was it Union Pacific? <laughs> and talk about a different time. Yes. I mean, the railroads got what they wanted. Yeah. But wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to just, you know, take your magic wand and say, I want this and that's what we're going to get. Well, they had several advantages and among like those corruption. were the fact, well, <laughs> there is that. But, but really the biggest advantage was they built the railroads first, right? right now, right, all of right. the public agencies of this era working on transportation are building in transportation in already developed urban yeah, areas. And that just increases the degree of difficulty and the level of care we have to take in evaluating and bringing that project to fruition. So this is going to happen? This is going to happen. Okay. Her name is Michelle Bame. She'll be back. She is, of course, the Southern California Regional Director for the California High Speed Rail Authority. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're in the San Gabriel Valley today. You are watching Charter Local Edition.